Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is the wise old gamer, the man with a million, hemorrhoids. So I know what you're thinking. Why are you standing up today? Well, being as married as long as I have, you don't get on your knees much anymore, so they don't hurt as much anymore. So today, I would like to talk about the state of single player gaming in 2022. Things that concern me and things that give me hope. So. Sit back, relax, and let me massage your cares away. Wait, it's not that kind of video. Let's discuss. Before I begin, I would like to say that even though I do play games online, it's just not my forte. Mainly because my hands do not move as quickly as they used to. Well, you know what they say, if you can't do something, you gotta pay for it. Honey, do you take Venmo or Cash App? Nor do I appreciate having a 12-year-old call my mom a whore, especially if it's my 12-year-old. I mean, it's okay if my wife calls my mom a whore, but then I gotta draw a line somewhere, right? What I enjoy is coming home after a long day of work, ignoring my wife, my kids, and my wife's boyfriend and being immersed in an interactive story. So as first and foremost a single player gamer, there are some trends that I've noticed recently that are of a little bit of a concern for me. The first would be the way games are monetized. Now I do understand that games are becoming more and more expensive to make. I remember a time when in the 8-bit era or in the even the 16-bit era you could have a few people code a game and come out and make money and be profitable however as the chips have become stronger and stronger you need more you need more people to program these games and the cost have ramped up so how with single player games the most money you make is on the initial launch and just like my value to my family, the value of the game goes down as time progresses. And unless you have DLC for that single player game, there's really no added incentive to put more money into the game for a consumer. Whereas if you have a multiplayer game, most of the times the game comes out at $60, $70, and it constantly is generating money thanks to either loot boxes or cosmetic downloads. Ten dollars for the Hello Kitty Warthog? Bye. So logically as a publisher, why would I fund a game, a single player game, that is one and done when it's not as profitable? Wouldn't it be more lucrative for me to fund a multiplayer game with cosmetic enhancements which I can definitely make more money on or if I'm going to fund a single player game why not I take that single player game chop it up into small DLC pieces and drip feed the story to the player base. After all it costs money to rent the Cosby room. The next area of concern for me is the younger generation namely gamers like my kids. Now, I've observed them playing games, and I've noticed that for them, gaming is more of a social experience than it is just games. In fact, both of my boys use gaming as a almost a social media app, like Instagram or TikTok. Well, I guess that makes sense because they need to have a venue where they can exchange your mama jokes and dick pics. I mean, I used to do that with Facebook but my relatives got upset. No, Grandma, it really is mine. It is not false advertisement. I don't care what the priest told you. Aren't you late for your parole hearing anyways? If you are a developer, you can increase the longevity of your games by releasing a multiplayer game and on a, uh, every so often releasing updates and fixes that keep the user base engaged. 
and it will require a lot less money than developing a whole new story-based game like single-player games need. The end of single-player games? Now what am I going to do with this thing? Hmm. Honey, do you want to play Vibrator Wars again? There are, however, some encouraging signs regarding the viability of single-player games going forward. The first of which being the success of games like Guardians of the Galaxy and Jedi Fallen Order. As we know, EA and Square Enix had previously tried to jump on the Battle Pass bandwagon and release games like Marvel's Avengers and Battlefront 2. To say their reception was underwhelming would be a understatement. <laughs> then they went back and they published games that were single player focused and narrative driven and both of those games, both Jedi Fallen Order and Guardians of the Galaxy, were successful both on Metacritic and in sales. Hopefully this demonstrates to both publishers that there is still a loud vocal population in the gaming community that still wants single player games. The final positive sign is both a positive and a negative, a double edged sword if you will. And that would be the rise of subscription services for both Xbox with Game Pass and PlayStation for whatever they're going to call their future uh, subscription service. Let me explain. I believe that in the future, third-party publishers are going to use these subscription platforms to get the money initially up front from both either Sony or Microsoft to publish their multiplayer game on. And then once the game is on these services, they're going to have microtransactions and cosmetics to further enhance their income. However, I believe that the onus of making single player games will fall in the laps of both of these platform holders, both Sony and Microsoft. They know that there is a large contingent of players who still play single player games. So they're going to use their internal first party studios and second party studios to make these single player games to compel gamers like me to join their subscription service. So subscription services, I don't think third parties are going to make single player games much anymore, but I do believe that those single player focused games will be made primarily by these platform holders, Sony and Microsoft. So now it's your turn. Do you think that single player games are on the way out or do you feel my fears are unwarranted? Let's continue the discussion in the comments below. And as you know, I'm trying to grow this channel. So any critiques or criticisms that you may have pertaining to the video would be really appreciated. Don't worry about my feelings. I got a thick skin. So on the way out, hit the dislike button, subscribe, and remember, any man can afford a six pack, but it takes a real man with money to afford a keg. Be wise.